What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we were on a path based on what James Gunn had been saying of the sort of characters that he wants to do in this new universe, the DC universe. Uh, there have been some concerns, but James Gunn, you know, seems to c clarify things and, and, and not let us go too far ahead of him into what this may be. He sort of calms the nerves, but he is re-agitated those concerns and those nerves with uh, the rumors of him wanting a specific type of Supergirl. The words used to describe Supergirl are, um, is it humorous, Brian? What, what, what was it? Was it uh, punk humorous, rock? Humorous Supergirl with a punk rock edginess. Brian, what do you think of that? I'm I, you you texted me and you said I'm concerned this concerns me uh it concerned me on two two levels so number one was he wanted this character to appear in Superman legacy now up there's been a lot of smoke around how many characters Gunn has put in this movie and he's been trying to reassure people that there's really only about 10 parts that have sort of meaningful lines um which is all well and good. But I am a little concerned if we're going to put Supergirl in Superman's debut movie to lead off the DCU. There's something to me a little different about having the cousin and having the other Kryptonian. Like, even if she's only there for a couple of scenes. I didn't like that. I, I just feel like that's not a cameo or that's not a introduction that needs to be made to build this world, in my opinion. Yeah. So that was the first thing. The second thing is... If she is going to be humorous and punk rock, then presumably that would mean that if she is in Superman Legacy, we would have to get that from her in whatever part she plays in Superman Legacy. So I don't really love that either. Now, the other thing I didn't love was her movie, right? Woman of Tomorrow and the comic that it's supposedly based on. That Supergirl doesn't fit in my mind with what he's talking about that felt exactly. like a war weary kind of down on her luck but more experienced supergirl who would then be kind of rediscovering her you know uh, you know righteousness and strength and heroism that doesn't feel humorous or punk rocky to me um, sounds like tank girl yeah and weirdly like if we're talking about the physical look I know he's been adamant that like, and we've heard like Sasha Kaye is not coming back, but she kind of had the punk character, didn't she? Kind of have that haircut and here's the a thing with a little bit and how she yeah, was already yeah, but here's not the, the thing. Humor, but. No, certainly not the humor, but here's the thing with Sasha Kaye's uh, character, Supergirl, of and, and the reason for me anyway, not um, not to bring her back is simply because her character in that movie went nowhere. No, her I agree. character was used specifically to replace the Superman character that it was originally based on. This yeah. is supposed to be Clark Kent in prison, not her. And she served her purpose. And at the end of that movie, she didn't win. Right. So we have to get out of this situation of liking a specific character and then just wanting that character to come back if they were used for a specific purpose and they're dead or whatever leave it be enjoy the character for who they were and that's it but the the route that james gunn is going with this character like you said it doesn't fit brian and and that and that's concerning me and tracy were talking about it and he was like i ah, I don't, this is this is this is one of his concerns. This is one of the concerns that he had. Well, it kind of felt like when that description came across, I was immediately thinking like, well, this is like Supergirl meets Guardians of the Galaxy, and I'm like, that's not really what I want to see. I don't know, man. That's what it felt like a little bit, you know. Like this, like is he missing a guy? Is he missing a person that's humorous that could? I don't know. 
that he has to have her and has to have and she has to be this person what what is it what character is he basing her on Brian I mean you know he never does I mean never does anything without a rationale but it just the, the choice the choice that choice and then the choice to have her debut in Superman's debut movie to me seems ill-fated I, I like I said like, I'm fine with building a world I'm fine you want to make a Kara reference totally fine like in passing I don't think she needs to be on screen. I don't think she needs to talk. I don't want there to be, quite honestly, another Kryptonian interfering with our focus on what should be a great Superman story. I agree with you 100%. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this um, need to have Supergirl possibly in this film. And if she is in this film, a Supergirl who is... Not familiar to most DC comic book fans who who if they've read the Super Superman Supergirl um Woman of Tomorrow, is it called? Yeah. They won't recognize this character. At least I don't think. Uh so let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of that. Brian, let's move on to some other news, which is like I gotta pat myself on the shoulder again, because I've been talking about this for quite a while but you know because certain names are already in place there's no reason to continue to harp on it right although zach zach mcgowan is still nobody's casted wolverine yet so zach mcgowan is my number one guy <laughs> i although zach efron is probably the one that he that might get it right I might get it. Well, especially after beefing up for that wrestling movie, which supposedly is really good. I haven't seen Iron Claw, yeah, but me, apparently me he's amazing I want to see that movie, movie. too. Uh, Alan Richson, Brian. Everybody's calling for Alan Richson to be Batman. I sent a message to James Gunn on threads, and I said, Alan Richson, to him. And I said, don't think about it. <laughs> there's no there's nothing to think about Brian this is perfect casting if anybody could play Batman to bring him to life in terms of what we look at Batman physically in the comics he to a T matches that profile and Bruce Wayne is a breeze would be a breeze. Your thoughts, Brian, on this possibility? Trace Tracy said Jason Ankles must be going crazy because he said he probably thought he had this. It's over. Alan Rich's name his has entered into that list, and there's no one unless Alan Rich said he doesn't want to do it. There's no one that's going to dethrone that, Brian. I mean, if it happens, I mean, look, I mean, if it happens, you heard it here first from Pablo because he's been saying it um, from the beginning. But yeah, look, I mean, Alan Richson, 40 years old, he is he is a star. I mean, Reacher is the biggest show that Amazon has produced. Uh, it's awesome. If you haven't seen it, like I mean, I'm, I'm loving season two, just like I love season one. They're very different, but his character is amazing. Um He's doing a lot of things. I think that's the other thing. Like when you when you watch it, it's not that you, he's he's not doing Batman in that. It's not what Jeff yeah, Richard yeah. is. But you, he is putting on display like a, a very good physical acting performance. I referenced there was a Terminator affect to the way he makes the character move. Um, there is also, you know, I found it's funny. Like I found myself musing, could he like? We were talking about superheroes because he's played several, right? He was the original Aquaman in Smallville. He was Hawk in Titans. Um, and now now we're talking about this. And I kind of was like, I was looking at him in the season two. And I was like, you know, and I was, he's sitting there with his face and the way it is. And I was like, you know, we 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 could Lou Ferrigno the Hulk with him too if we wanted. Like he's <laughs> actually big enough, physical enough and strong enough to actually be the Hulk, like without CGI. Um, and yeah. I was like, we, he could do that, but no, I, I hear what you're saying. And, uh, there, you know, I think he, now that he's a star on the rise, he can get a look at stuff like that and be recognizable without being so expensive that he breaks the bank for the studio, yeah. which is kind of where we are right there. now. That's kind of where we are. You don't want to be paying rock type money for people to take these roles. You want people where you can get favorable contracts, but who 
can do the part and get a buzz going. You know, like way back in the day, like, you know, Christian Bale was basically a fan casting. Like fans wanted that. Two years before Nolan made him Bruce Wayne and Batman and people lost their minds. Like that's perfect. And then he wanted to do a great job, you know, but it was like fans had something to do with that. And so, yeah, this could be, you know, if he does it and if they, they use him, um, I mean, I'd love to, I'd love to see what he can do with it. Especially, I mean, honestly, like I said, he'd have to lose 20 pounds. I think he's so big in season two. Jeez, he's he's almost two Bruce Wayne's physically imposing, but he's not a tank. <laughs> <laughs> this dude is a tank in season two. Hey, there's nothing really to think about here, Ryan. There's nothing really to think about. Jason Eccles, forget about it. Start looking for something else. He had 20 seasons of Supernatural. He's good. Yeah, yeah, he's good. You can and do he's probably... Soldier Boy. He's Soldier Boy now. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's the fan casting that... You know who's probably... Ca- John Campion has thrown his name in there. Because John Campion can't get enough of one guy. He, he, did you see Boyega's reaction? That was funny. No, the what did he say? But I, before you do, before you say anything, I know for a fact he's like, I'm not doing this. Go ahead. Yeah, because that's exactly what the fans came at him to do the job. He, he posted, he posted um, Eddie Murphy's donkey from Shrek doing, <laughs> and, and he wouldn't have been a bad choice because I think no. he's a fantastic actor. And he's Disney, but he knows Disney that's baggage there that he ain't trying to well, carry. He's Disney friendly, but he's Disney enemy. Adam Richardson is the guy. Uh, there's no this. There's no real discussing this. If he wants it, take it. But obviously, there's some rules you gotta abide by. Right? Well, yeah, I mean that's. I mean, and and obviously the way they set this up, they're gonna have two. They're gonna have two Bruce Waynes, two Batman, right? And that's that's kind of what where we're at. So we Batman Part Two is filming in in March, and we're you know like the rumors of Robin and Hush uh, continue to kind of loom over that. Uh, James Gunn had kind of made it seem like he had only heard a preliminary pitch for the movie, so he knew generally what the beats were, but no script yet. But they're saying March is what they're targeting to kind of get this thing filming. And if that happens, then you look for, you know, who's on set, right? Then you look for reports of who's popped up and what they're doing. So we got that that track. And then, you know, if we get Rich in as as an as a, you know, an older Bruce Wayne and in sort of the other track, I mean, great. I think I'd be interested to see it. It's very different. And that works. The, uh, if Alan Richin gets that part and is and is announced and confirmed, I think it hurts possibly, 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 Brian, Matt Reeves, Batman, Batman, the character. One thing I don't like about the original, the Batman film is how they try to make him look or emphasize his physical appearance, which wasn't impressive, Brian. There was a couple of scenes where I was like, why are you showing me this dude? He's not. Yeah. Why? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So people having to make that comparison puts Robert Pattinson in a bad light, sort of. I think it depends. I think it depends. I think a lot of what we bet on with the Batman is how much development his character is going to make. That's really the bet of this whole trilogy, right? So... I could extend that to his physical development. I could extend that and say, look, this is year two Batman. If he's learning everything else, if he comes back for this movie and he's 20 pounds more muscular, then you could say that's part of his learning. Part of his development was like, I need to be stronger. I need to be bigger to do what I need to do. Like, then it becomes that's part of the story. if they go there, Brian. What? I don't know if they're going to go there. I'm not saying that. I don't know. I'm just saying, but like that, the, the, this trilogy hinges on what, and this is to Matt Reeves' credit, he has succeeded in creating a Batman trilogy where the thing that matters most is how dynamic is Batman, not his villain. That's actually a feat. No one has ever pulled that off. Not even Nolan pulled that off because the villain still carried um, Christian Bale's arc at points, as good an actor as he was. Mm -hmm. This trilogy lives and dies with where they take the Bruce Wayne character and what Batman as a symbol becomes to Gotham over the next two movies. That's, which is very cool, but a big risk, a big swing. So you're right. Part of that is, yeah, the physical, the physicality has to change too. That's part of, that's part of the deal. But like, if, if he's still this like, you know, hermit, you know, bad haircut, doesn't see the light of day and Batman, all of Batman part two, we got a problem. Like they were not going anywhere then. And it will be emphasized even more because I'm telling you, Alan Rishon as Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne, Brian, that will be something to watch. Forget Batman. 
Well, the funny thing too about Reacher <clears throat> is that they do well. Again, very different affect. But he's funny in that show. He's deadpan funny in that show. And he does it really well. Mm. Like he makes these like looks and he makes these like one one liners that are Brian, not he was in Blue Mountain they State. are legit hilarious. There's no thinking about it, ladies and gentlemen. Adam Richardson is going to be your next Batman. You're hearing it here first. He is going to be the next Batman. Unless, God forbid, Adam Richardson says no. I don't want to do it for whatever reason, which I mean, would be crazy. You, you, I mean, with the amount of books that they have for Reacher and the amount of classic stories they have for Batman, if you manage to be Batman and Jack Reacher, I don't really know if you need to do anything else. <laughs> like, you're good. I don't know. Like, right? Like, one one, one, them, one, one of them well. will have to be... The, the, one of them will have because you've heard if you've read his interviews about him to having to keep up the physical appearance of Reacher is no easy task. No, he's and, very open about like he takes the testosterone. Yeah, he tells you him, exactly yeah. what it was required, and yeah, it's not easy. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be very interesting that whole deal. There's a lot of in, uh, interesting things happening there. But um, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of these of this news for Superman and Batman. Um, Alan, Rich Alan Richson being possibly the new Batman for Brave and the Bold and James Gunn's DCU. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Nigeria Report. The show goes on! Yeah!